Okay, hello guys. Meron ako ditong dalawang questions for retained earnings. So, related ito sa RE. Um, computation ito, pero nilagyan natin ng multiple choice para meron tayong selection. So, umpisahan na natin sa question number one. So, this is all about ABC Corporation na nag-issued ng 200,000 shares of 5 peso par at 10 peso per share. On January 1, 2020, ang retained earnings ni ABC amounted to 3 million. In March 2020, ABC issued 15,000 shares at 12 peso per share and 215,000 cash dividends were declared on November 15, payable in December 20, 2020, which is the month after. Ang net income for that period was 830,000. So, ang question ngayon dito, magkano ang retained earnings as of December 31 or by the end of the year? So, yun yung kailangan nating alamin. Dito, no, careful kayo kung papaano i-analyze yung mga transactions. Kasi for the solution part, nilagay ko dito sa kanan. Pero, ipinasa ko dito lahat ng mga transactions. Although, ano, we have to analyze kung yung transaction ba na yan ay may effect sa iyong retained earnings. Kasi retained earnings ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. So, para makompute natin kung magkano ang retained earnings by December 31, eh di i-plot natin dito ang mga amounts. So, magkano daw ang beginning retained earnings? That is your January 1 balance. At ang sabi dito, that is 3 million. So, ipasok natin ito. Kung meron kang papel ano, or meron kang Excel, eh di ilagay mo din siya para matignan natin kung parehas tayo ng amount na kalalabasan. Noong March 2020, nag-issue si ABC ng 15,000 additional shares at 12 peso per share. Okay, so eto, ano ang gagawin natin dito? May effect ba ito sa ating retained earnings o wala? Para malaman ninyo kung may effect yan, we have to journalize. Kung ito ay cash issuance, okay, so dinidebit natin, okay, yung cash, magkano yan? That is 15,000 times 12 peso, kung magkano yung market value or market price at the time of issuance. Kikredit natin yung share capital for the par value, which is 5 peso, no, times 15,000. And then, yung difference, which is 7 peso, that is the excess of par, I-multiply natin ng 15,000, that is the share premium, which is also a credit. Kaya pag in natin yung journal entry, etong share issuance, wala po tayong effect sa ating retained earnings. Kasi ang may epekto dyan sa shareholders equity ay yung share capital at saka yung share premium. Okay? So dapat hindi natin ito isinasama sa computation. O next, dividend declaration. Meron dito 215,000. Declared on November 15, issued or paid on December 20. O dito alamin natin, on the date of declaration, dividend declaration, ano yung journal entry? Para malaman natin kung may effect ba ito sa RE. O, debit retained earnings 215,000 and credit dividends payable because this is a cash dividend. So, anong effect natin sa retained earnings? O, meron tayong kabawasan for 215,000. Hindi addition ha. Careful kayo. It should be subtracted, deducted. O, net income daw, 830,000. Alam naman ninyo na dapat ang net income ay mag add up sa ating retained earnings. Kung net loss yan, ibabawas. Because remember, the nature of your retained earning is your accumulated profit or loss. O, by the way, baka matanong lang ng iba, Doon sa date of distribution, date of payment ng dividends, may effect ba yun sa retained earnings? Kasi December 20, o debit ka ng dividends payable, credit ka ng cash, wala po itong effect. Okay? Kaya hindi na natin ito isinama. So, compute natin, we have 3 million minus 215,000 plus 830, the answer is 306, uh, 3,615,000. Ang sagot po natin dito ay letter D. Ayan ang ating tamang sagot. Okay? So, this is your answer at sana po ay tama ang inyong sagot. O ngayon, proceed tayo sa question number 2. 
Ang tinatanong naman dito is ano yung effect sa retained earnings nitong transactions uh, which is a share dividend distribution. Kanina sa question number 1, mayroong cash dividend declaration ano? Dito naman share dividend. Now, on May 1, 2020, ABC's Corporations Board of Directors or yung BOD ay nag-declare ng 10% share dividend. Ano ito? Small or large share dividend? At dapat alam ninyo kung ano yung basis saan tayo mag uh, ano no, saan manggagaling, anong porsyento para malaman natin kung ito ba ay large or small. O yung market price daw ng ABC's Outstanding shares which is 30,000 ay 20 pesos par no which is 20 peso par ay 90 pesos per share. So yung market price is 90 pesos, ang par value ay 20. Okay, on the date of uh, declaration. Ang share dividend ay dinistribute noong July 1, 2 months after when the market price was 100 peso per share. So ngayon, ang tanong Anong effect nito sa retained earnings? O pero para malaman natin yan, kailangan din alam ninyo ano ang treatment dito. Siyempre, ito ay 10%. This is a small dividend. Okay? 20% and up. Ito yung large dividend. At siyempre, meron yung effect sa ating journal entries. Kailan natin nire-recognize at par or at market price. So, naglagay ako dito ng solution, journal entry on declaration, and then journal entry on distribution. So, ano ba dapat ang journal entry on declaration? O, alam naman ninyo na lagi, okay, dapat on the date of declaration, we debit retained earnings. Kasi ang ating mga dividends ay nanggagaling ito sa ating retained earnings account. Unappropriated to be specific. Pero dito, ano, isang klase lang naman ito. Walang appropriation na ipinakita. So, debit tayo, retained earnings. Credit tayo ng share dividend. Okay? Distributable. Share dividend distributable. Okay, pero bago ang lahat, computein muna natin. Magkano daw? 10%. Eh, magkano yung outstanding ngayon? 30,000 yan, di ba? O, times 10%. Times. Pag small dividend declaration, ang retained earnings ay idinidebit natin or ibinavalue natin at the market price. So, ang pipick up natin ay magkano? Is it the 90,000 or is it the 100? Ay, sorry. Is it the 90 pesos or is it the 100 pesos? O, ang pipick up natin dito is the market price on the date of declaration, which is 90 pesos. Kaya po ano, ang sagot natin dyan, 270,000 na debit. How about your share dividend distributable? So, ganun din ano, 30,000 number of shares times 10% because that is the share dividend o, times par value of 20 pesos. So, the answer for the credit, the share dividend distributable ay 60,000. Kunin natin yung difference. Okay. O, saan natin ito ipapasok? That is your share premium. Okay? For 210,000 pesos. Ngayon, meron na tayo ditong effect no? sa retained earnings which is 270,000. Pero wait lang. Baka kasi dito sa journal entry on distribution, kasi same year yan, baka meron itong effect. Okay, so on July 1, ano ang journal entry on the date of distribution? O, oh, eto ano, dapat hindi kayo malilito because our debit here is simply your share dividend distributable and credit to your share capital account for the amount of 60,000 pesos. So, wala na po itong effect dito sa ating retained earnings on the date of distribution. Kaya, pag pinili natin yung sagot dito, ano, tinignan natin yung mga choices, alin ang tama? Debit retained earnings ng 270,000 decrease. Okay? So, pag hinanap natin, the answer here is letter C. Okay? 270,000 decrease. Alright? So, yan po ano, ang ating dalawang simple pero kailangang i-analyze na problem on retained earnings. So, if you have any question on these two simple problems, please let me know and I'll be happy to assist you. But until then, Bye-bye.